This video will review 10 questions you may be asked on the private pilot written exam. The video will include the question and answers and more importantly, where to look to find the answers to the questions. You can ace your private pilot written exam and private pilot check ride. Suggested study resources include the Pilot's Handbook of Aeronautical Knowledge and Aeronautical Information Manual. The first question asks, How far will an aircraft travel in 7.5 minutes with a ground speed of 114 knots? To find the answer, you can use the distance flown function on an E6B calculator or do the problem by hand. To solve this problem, just divide the ground speed of 114 knots by 60 to find the knots per minute traveled. 114 divided by 60 equals 1.9. 1.9 multiplied by 7.5 minutes equals 14.25 nautical miles. The correct answer is A. Question 2 asks. The radius of the procedural outer area of Class C airspace is normally. According to Chapter 3 of the Aeronautical Information Manual, Class C airspace normally has a procedural outer area of 20 nautical miles from the primary Class C airspace airport. Refer to the density altitude chart in the top left of the screen. What is the effect of a temperature increase from 35 to 50 degrees Fahrenheit on the density altitude if the pressure altitude remains at 3,000 feet MSL? To find the answer, draw a line up from the 35 degree section under outside air temperature to the 3,000 foot pressure altitude line highlighted by the yellow line. Then move over to the left side of the chart to see the density altitude is just under 2,000 feet. Do the same thing at the 50 degree marker and draw a line up to the 3000 foot pressure altitude line and over to the density altitude side of the chart. You can see the density altitude increases to just under 3000 feet at an outside air temperature of 50 degrees. So that means there would be a roughly 1000 foot increase in density altitude given the increase in air temperature from 35 to 50 degrees and assuming the pressure altitude remains at 3000 feet above mean sea level. The correct answer is A. The Aeronautical Information Manual specifically encourages pilots to turn on their landing lights when operating below 10,000 feet, day or night, and especially when operating. According to Chapter 4 of the Aeronautical Information Manual, pilots are further encouraged to turn on their landing lights when operating below 10,000 feet, day or night, especially when operating within 10 miles of any airport or in conditions of reduced visibility. The correct answer to Question 4 is B. Question 5 asks, when making routine transponder code changes, pilots should avoid inadvertent selection of which code. According to Chapter 4 of the Aeronautical Information Manual in the section on communication procedures, when making routine code changes, pilots should avoid inadvertent selection of codes 7500, 7600, or 7700, thereby causing momentary false alarms at automated ground facilities. The correct answer is C. 7500. A pilot experiencing the effects of hyperventilation should be able to restore the proper carbon dioxide level in the body by. Check out Chapter 17 of the Pilot's Handbook of Aeronautical Knowledge to see the proper steps to take for a pilot experiencing hyperventilation. In addition to slowing the breathing rate, breathing into a paper bag or talking aloud helps to overcome the effects of hyperventilation. This sign confirms your position on. Recall from our previous video on how to read airport signs and markings that location signs have yellow letters or numbers on a black background. This sign would confirm the pilot's position on runway 22 since location signs are black with yellow inscription and a yellow border with no arrows. Location signs are used to identify taxiway and runway locations. 
See Chapter 14 of the Pilot's Handbook of Aeronautical Knowledge or watch our previous video on how to read airport signs and markings for more information on airport signs and markings. The correct answer is A. Question 8 asks. From the cockpit, this marking confirms the aircraft to be. The runway marking at the top of the screen indicates a runway boundary marker. The pilot on the dash side of the lines would be on a runway about to exit and a pilot on the solid side of the lines would be on a taxiway or runway waiting for ATC clearance to proceed onto the runway. The correct answer is B. On a runway, about to clear. What are the basic VFR weather minimums required to take off from the Onawa, Iowa, K-36 airport during the day? Notice the Onawa airport highlighted by the yellow box in the chart. The airport is an uncontrolled airfield in Class G airspace. The required VFR weather minimums for daytime flight in Class G airspace is one statute mile and clear of clouds, according to the Aeronautical Information Manual. The correct answer is C. If receiver autonomous integrity monitoring capability is lost in flight. See Chapter 1 of the Aeronautical Information Manual in the section on navigational aids to find that without RIM capability, the pilot has no assurance of the accuracy of the GPS position. The correct answer is B. Thank you for watching the video. You should now be better prepared to pass the private pilot written exam or private pilot check ride. Please like the video and subscribe to our channel for more aviation related educational videos.